more complicated before it gets resolved, uh, is that it's about that awareness issue. So let me just put a few things on the table around, around GMOs. So most people don't realize today that marker-assisted breeding, even within a, the same species, is actually a GMO. Um, because all it is is manipulation of DNA. And you can do that within a species or between species. So all of that is GMO. Now, people don't talk about it that way. And where, the, where most people think about it is the, is the transgenics side of this. But even on the transgenic side, 60% of all patents for GMOs are for human health medicines and skin grafts. And uh, for example, all the uh, insulin on the planet today is GMO. I mean, it's all genetically modified. Um, and of the 40% that remains, probably 30% out of that 40% is for food additives, fermentation agents, and other kinds of things that are microorganisms. And there's where the European Union took a little <laughs> sidestep very conveniently and defined GMMs as not being GMOs. So <laughs> genetically modified microorganisms are not GMOs. Walks like a duck, quacks like a duck. But, but, but what that allows is all the French wine uses fermentation agents that are GMMs. And the beer, and the sauerkraut, and the yogurt, and the rennet substitute for cheese, they're all GMMs. So I think we got to be honest about this stuff. We need awareness. We need consensus. And we're going to disagree about some of these things, but at let's at least start with some of the same definitions and the same science and get forward and, and how we move forward. I would, I mean, we have, we've got a, a very complicated network when it comes to GMOs. Uh, we have a lot of our strongest offices are in Europe. They're not in uh, developing countries where people are maybe a little more concerned about how much food there is rather than whether it's GMO or not. Uh, but, but we have even begun to kind of parse out. We wouldn't. We would be concerned about genetically modified organisms in aquaculture, where there is such a high prevalence of escapes. Uh, we do not think that that's a smart thing. Period. Okay. Feed if it's processed, no problem. Those are the. But those are the kinds of nuances. This is not a black and white thing. There's a lot of different issues. Uh, Gary, up in the back row. Then we'll finally get to John. Thank you, Gary Blumenthal. Uh, I'll tell you a story. Last month there was a meeting of representatives from major agribusinesses in Florida. And one of the guys said, you know, there are some environmental groups we wouldn't even go near. There are others that we will sit down with, but we know we can't really make any progress with them. And then there are a few that we actually have great collaboration with. And your organization was one of them mentioned. Um, your views aren't exactly mainstream within the environmental community. So uh, when you get together, when you meet with all the other environmental organizations, how does that work out for you? Uh, you know, so as I said before, you know, we don't buy or sell anything and we don't make laws or regulations. Uh, and no other environmental group does either. So as I look to how do I influence the world, it's not by talking to a bunch of environmentalists. It's by actually talking to companies that buy and sell things, or talking to governments that make laws and regulations, and trying to create awareness about trends and issues and things that they should be aware of and begin to address. I think that um, we do have to bring civil society along, and that includes NGOs of all stripes, uh, as well as other groups. Uh, that's not the particular thing that I'm that good at, like I don't do social media, that's not my shtick. Um, I, I personally uh, am of the opinion that if I can change three to 5,000 key people on this planet, I can change how we grow food on this planet. I mean, that's kind of what I believe in, and that's why I've set this up, and that's why I work on these things. Other groups have different systems and different theories of change. Uh, we, did, we did research that showed that, you know, globally, uh, a uh, hundred food companies touch all 25% of all 15 of the commodities that I showed in the early slide up there. So that's a hundred companies I have to touch to shift 25% of the market directly, but through their purchases probably leverage 
40 to 50 percent of production because people will compete to sell into those markets. There's off-season issues. There's there's different kinds of, of supply chain issues. So uh, for me, it's it's I, I work with a smaller number of people to, to try to make change. A lot of those groups are working on much bigger bigger issues. But I've in in the Netherlands. Uh, somebody referred to me once, and I don't even know if this makes sense in Dutch because it certainly doesn't in English, as as the white crow, the one that proves that all the rest are black. 